Yeah, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Hariharan Ramachandra. I'm a postdoc working at the MUFI research group at Harriet Watt University. So I'm excited to share some of our preliminary results with you all in this talk. And uh, so I'll be discussing mostly about the modeling of fault leakage within a vertical equilibrium approach and highlight such importance as a fast and effective tool for screening CO2 storage reservoirs. So before we begin, I'd like to uh, thank my supervisors, Florian Doster and Sebastian Geiger. I'd also like to thank Raphael, Christine, Ian and Austin for helping me with various aspects of this work. So um, we begin this talk by setting up a motivation for CCS. So CCS or carbon capture and storage involving capturing CO2 from stationary sources and safely storing them in subsurface formations such as depleted oil and gas reservoirs, and aquifers, etc. The goal here is to mitigate or at least slow down the effects of CO2 on climate. And uh, diving in, if you look at any large scale project, CO2 storage has its own inherent risks. So understanding this risk is very important and uh, it involves assessing the event likelihood and the resulting damage. So in this work, we specifically focus on the risk of leakage along a fault. So typically when CO2 is injected in the subsurface, it can potentially leak if it encounters a pre-existing or a reactivated fault pathway. A blow up of a fault pathway, a typical fault pathway is shown here. So there are two possible scenarios here. The CO2 can either leak through the damage zone or the, as shown by the uh, fracture region there or through the uh, uh, fractures individual fracture network and uh, assuming that the damage matrix has an extremely low permeability. So the flow properties of this fault zone will strongly control the leakage through these regions and uh, uh, and there is always a complex interactions between these matrix fracture characteristics such as aperture width length effective stresses and developing this uh, 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 relationships require ex ex uh, an extremely good experimental characterization. Going back, taking a project perspective, faults pose a particular risk as smaller faults can be easily overlooked during the field development stage and especially in the field exploration and characterization phase. So they can exist either far away from the monitoring well or injection well, and that can make the detection quite challenging. So this becomes an especially critical problem during the concept selection phase when the data is extremely limited and the uncertainty is high. So conducting a full scale 3D flow coupled geomechanic simulation to resolve this issue will be a computationally expensive way to solve this model. So our goal here is to assuage this problem by developing a fast screening tool using the multi-scale multi-physics approach within a vertically equilibrium uh, model setting. So there are two key advantages for doing this. So this is a quick approach and you get a good, you get a, an approximate fault leakage estimate for a wide range of uncertainties. And you can quickly identify N member scenarios which will need further investigation by let's say using a 3D flow coupled geomechanics model. So for this work, we've been using a vertical uh, 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 vertical equilibrium approach. I hope uh, most of them. So I can give you a quick refresher about this vertical equilibrium approach. Yeah, typically when you inject CO2 in the reservoir, it goes to the top of the reservoir and tends to segre segregate. And there will be, there will be a segregation of the CO2 zone and the brine zone, and there'll rarely be any vertical flow between these zones. So we can take advantage of this feature, and then the simulations and separate these into um, and uh, characterize them using a capillary pressure or a gravity based approach and then you can use a vertically integrated model approach. So here I can show you an example where I will show a 2D simulation. Um, uh, where uh, the CO2 is injected in the mid well located in the middle of the reservoir and then the top portion shows the gas saturation evolution for a fine scale simulation. The middle grid shows the simulation on a vertical equilibrium approach and in the bottom we show the reconstructed gas saturation from this. So we are using the uh, CO2 lab module within MRST to develop this and what you can see is the gas saturation, reconstructed gas saturation is uh, it's very close to the actual uh, fine scale simulation and the takeaway is that despite the reduction in dimensions, the upscale variables implicitly capture all the behavior of the full system and the simplification reduces the computational costs substantially. So that that is one of the key takeaways, but there is still one issue when it comes to this vertical equilibrium where the key assumption is that there is rarely any vertical flow in this model, but when you introduce a fault in this reservoir, there is going to be substantial vertical flow. The question then arises, how are we going to account for this uh, assumption? How are we going to account for this factor in a vertical equilibrium modeling approach? And so we are going to explore this with a sort of a multi-scale modeling approach as I show you in the following slides. So here we show you the conceptual leakage 
model we are going to use for this uh, 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 as a comparison for all our modeling approaches. So you have a three layer reservoir system. The reservoir is uh, the bottom injection reservoir is at the bottom. Then you have a cap lock layer and the secondary layer. So there's a 100 meter long 30 meter uh, uh, tall system with each layer being 10 meters. The CO2 is injected at the base of the reservoir and the injection is controlled by a boundary condition on the left. So here we are giving a boundary condition that represents a CO2 column height of three meters or five meters. So three meters where so you change the pressure and saturation for the top three meters of the reservoir and then make the rest of the reservoir hydrostatic by controlling the pressure and saturation. So the the boundary condition of the right extreme is meant to represent the fault core. So you would assume that there is no flux across the right side of the uh, fault and you have a small fault region, a five meter wide fault region that's connecting the reservoir and the top reservoir through the cap lock. So I can show you the simulation uh, saturation evolution for such a uh, scenario where you inject CO2 at the base and then the CO2 comes out at the top. So, so this is a buoyancy dominated system and then the key the key controlling factor or the key parameter we are going to use for the comparison for all the other modeling approaches I show will be the gas flux coming out of the top reservoir from the left boundary condition. So that's going to be the way we are going to compare the results through all the bound other approaches. So the question is, can we minimize this model? Can we can we get a good reduced order model for this? So, so the first approach I show, I show you is the vertical equilibrium plus the fine scale grid approach. So we are using the hybrid VE model over here, module over here developed by Olav and others. And so this approach takes advantage of both the VE and the fine scale approach. So at regions where the horizontal flow is going to dominate the vertical flow, so we can represent them using a VE grid, like the middle sections of the reservoir. And at the regions where there's going to be substantial vertical flow, let's say at the at the fault boundary or at the boundary in coming into the fault, you can represent them as a fine scale grid problem. So now the original 12,000 grid problem, which I showed you before, has been reduced to a 1,200 grid problem. So you gain substantial advantage, computational advantage, at the same time, you are keeping all the physics of the uh, fault in play where you can keep the uh, permeability properties, the capillary pressure or different properties still in play because you're gridding the fault in fine scale. And I show you a sample grid for this scenario. And then in the next uh, modeling approach, we are going to combine in this approach, we are going to use the EDFM approach to combine a VE grid. So we are combining two VE reservoirs using an, uh, a, a non neighboring connector. A non neighboring connector is short for a uh, LNC is short for a non neighboring connector, just like the name suggests. It connects two grids which are physically apart from each other. So these are commonly used in discrete fractures and uh, connecting the discrete fractures and the surrounding porous medium in the EDFM models. And so we are borrowing this concept to connect two VE grids over here. So both the reservoirs are represented as a vertical equilibrium grid in this approach. And instead of the fault blocks being modeled explicitly, we are representing them as a 2D vertical plane as an NNC which connects these two reservoirs. And the grid is then coupled to each other via a source sink relationship or a transfer function between these two grids. Now the, word, the, the, key, the key way we are connecting this is the transmissibility of the fault has been represented through uh, by changing the vertices and the permeability of these uh, non neighboring connectors so that the transmissibilities are same for the fine scale grid as well as this region. And we are using upstream weighting for the relative permeability for this approach. And for the final approach, we are going to uh, we have built a, a fully coupled VE plus full fault model. And here we are using the HWU fractures module over here. So and both the reservoirs are now represented as a fine scale uh, vertical equilibrium grid. And in this approach, instead of the fault grid blocks, these two VE reservoirs are connected by a transfer flux function as shown by the red arrow here. And this transfer function strongly depends on the pressure and saturation at the base reservoir and the pressure and saturation of the top reservoir. And that's how we are connecting the fluxes between them. So as a simple approximation, as a first order approximation, we have shown a, a, a flux uh, model over here. And since the model modeling we have done so far has been buoyancy driven, we have not included any pressure term. And the uh, flux is given by the transmissibility of the fault and the uh, relative permeability is given by the upstream weighting. And we have assumed uh, and we have made the uh, uh, the height of the CO2 in the reservoir control the flux that's going to go out. So over here now I compare all these four approaches with the fine scale uh, simulations and I show one of the results here where uh, uh, we have taken the fault permeability to be one millidarcy and the reservoir permeability to be around one darcy. 
And now it's the same. Uh, what you see over here is the, the, the gray dots are the fine scale simulation and the uh, yellow dots are the vertical equilibrium of uh, the vertical equilibrium hybrid approach. What you can see is that the hybrid approach is able to match the fine scale simulation really well. And then the goal over here is again not to match the early time behavior, but to match the steady, final steady state flux here. And the key uh, point is that the full fault model, which we showed finally, was able to match the final uh, um, uh, steady state flux uh, prediction over here. Although the VEDFM model is not able to match it right now, you should remember that here it's not reached the steady state. It is still increasing and uh, probably at later times it will match. For example, I can show another simulation where we have taken the fault permeability to be 100 millidarcy over here. And I've shown the gas saturation evolution for the scenario at uh, late and early times. And in this scenario, the EDFM is still able to match the uh, 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 fine scale simulation at late times. But at the same time, the hybrid approach, the uh, uh, the full fault model is able to actually capture the uh, final uh, 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 st steady state flux prediction quite well. So this is a very useful uh, conclusion for us because now the now we can try to integrate this in a large scale CO2 lab style model and calculate what the leakage fluxes will be. And with respect to the EDFM approach, what the one of the key points to consider here is that maybe if we can alter the transfer function between the reservoir and the existing, that could be one of the ways where we could improve more flux coming into the fault and match the final flux quite easily, even at adverse uh, permeability ratios. So now I can show you a full fault model. So over here we are using a large scale simulation for a CCS screening and uh, so we are going to use a generic offshore basin here. So more details of this grid and how it was obtained was discussed by my colleague Ian in the preceding poster session. So this simulation grid is around 11,000 grid blocks and uh, we use CO2 lab module for this exercise. So we are going to introduce an arbitrary fault as shown by the black line over here. And the flow along the X direction across this fault phase has been blocked to simulate the fault core effect. And then the fault width, width and the cap rock thickness were assumed for the specific fault length. And then now we have introduced a source term in the CO2 log module to estimate what the fault leakage flux would be using the equation shown here. This is the fault leakage flux in the vertical direction. And for now, we understand that this is an early approximation and uh, we are not including uh, water flux along this fault and that has been neglected for this. And this is some sort of a reasonable approximation when you take a buoyancy dominated system and hopefully the leakage is mostly likely to be the migration phase for an open cell and aquifer system. So I can show you uh, two uh, simulation results over here. So what we did is we had a, a constant injection rate of 0.75 megatons per year. Uh, for 50 years and a migration phase of 950 years and the system has open boundaries on all four sides. So we performed two simulations over here. One where the capillary entry pressure of the fault was taken as zero. So what it means is that the, when the CO2 reaches the fault block, it starts leaking vertically. And the other one where I see the bottom simulation where you see that uh, there is a small capillary entry pressure for the fault. We have taken it as 0.5 bars and a typical brooks Corey type capillary pressure curve was used here. So in this scenario, the CO2 leak, CO2 will reach the fault. It will build up so that it will have enough pressure to overcome this capillary entry pressure. And then once it's once there is sufficient buildup, it will start leaking. And you can actually observe this effect in the uh, leakage flux plot over here. So you can see that leakage rate for a capil no capillary entry pressure case. Con it starts early and then it's continuously increasing. Whereas if you look at the leakage rate for the case where there's ca capillary entry pressure, uh, it the, the leakage is delayed. It starts only around 500 years and even the final flux is far lesser than the what you see in the no distinct here. So now. There are so this is uh, where we are and uh, uh, there are a lot, lot of interesting takeaways we can have from this because. The key point is both the simulation took around 30 seconds, even including the fault properties, so. This is very useful in an uncertainty quantification workflow. For example, majority of the fault properties are unknown. So if you want to test out different fault permeabilities, you can use, uh, let's say, fault permeabilities, fault width, cap rock properties, or if you want to parameterize the fault permeability in terms of clay fraction, you can use some of the workflows developed by others. For example, Lewis has done a lot of this predict model to develop fault permeabilities from clay fraction. You can combine with that workflow, or you and you can do a large scale uncertainty analysis really fast for different fault leakage scenarios. 
scenarios. And then the other thing is this also works in a very well in an injection optimization workflows. So owing to its quickness, you can run a lot of uh, simulations really quick uh, to find out what will be the optimal injection location or what should be your injection pressure to minimize leakage in such uh, and what sort of uh, and how does the fault properties affect it? And the key point to note over here is we are, uh, I mean, we are not saying this is going to be the final solution, but what you would find out is all your N-member scenarios so that you can run a fully coupled 3D flow plus geomechanics simulation, um, which will resolve all this issue. And also the, the, the way the current model is set up, it's not perfect. There are a lot of assumptions in it, and so we are continuously working on improving this fault flux formulation. For example, Right now we have run some parameter studies of this fault leakage for different uh, different property, different uh, fault properties and identify how the what sort of leakage flux parameter leakage flux parameterization should be used. And the next step is we are going to refine the analytical model used to develop this flux approximation. There has been a lot of recent work by uh, Gilmore from the uh, uh, um, Cambridge University and from Mary Kang, one of uh, previous uh, Doster Associ Florian Association, who has worked on developing uh, uh, analytical solutions for fault approximation. So we are, we are going to refine this analytical model so that it can uh, it can take into account broad range of conditions. And the final step is we want to include this in the CO2 lab as a feature. So in, in the GUI at least, where you can actually click a point in the fault and say this is a fault region, so block the flow in this direction and then apply some fault properties so that you can run simulations. So that's the goal over here. And thanks for uh, hearing, uh, listening to my presentation. Now the brief summary is fault representation, simplified fault representations are possible. The VE plus fine scale grid, the hybrid VE model is a very good replacement for fine scale simulation. We found it very useful throughout our uh, calculations. And the VE plus EDFM requires some understanding for the interface between the reservoir and fault. Once we figure out the transfer functions there, it will be quite a powerful tool if you want to parameterize fault as a fraction network. And then finally, the VE plus fault fracture model we have developed over here is very good from a large uncertainty quantification studies perspective. So that's where we are. And we'd like to thank uh, Petronas for our support, and uh, we'd like to thank uh, uh, MRST team for building a, such a wonderful tool, which has been very useful for us through this process. Thank you.